Welcome to the dungeon, Marine. Most unexciting place on Mars. In this video, I'll be going through the history of one of the best villains in the Doom universe, Dr. Malcolm Petruger from Doom 3. So, without further delay, let's begin. Don't worry, they'll get their product. So, who is Malcolm Petruger? Well, as described in the Doom 3 strategy guide, Petruger was the UAC director of the Delta Labs division on Mars. The Delta Labs was originally created to specialize in conducting scientific research and breakthroughs. But after the UAC base was created on Mars, they would discover a plethora of ancient relics and infrastructure deep within the surface, like underground cities and temples. It would then be tasked with unearthing and understanding these rare artifacts of the ancient Martians, with Petruger leading the operation. Their biggest discovery was a broken and inactive teleporter that was created by the ancient Martians. This teleporter is located in the Erebus dig site, which is within the Erebus section of the UAC. This is the same teleporter that we observe at the beginning of Doom 3's first DLC, Resurrection of Evil. It is the same teleporter that the first Hellhunter spawns from. Now, alongside it, there were multiple tablets and glyphs written on almost every single wall, detailing how the teleporter works, some information about the ancient Martians, and most importantly, the demons that they fought. The UAC would assign Betruger to spearhead this operation and to get a better understanding of how the teleporter works by reverse engineering it and then translating the tablets and glyphs using state-of-the-art technology and linguistics programs. Betruger is extremely brilliant and very relentless in its efforts to unlock the potential of humanity and evolve it further. Petruger is an extreme workaholic, but it was because of his dedication to his work and the vision of the future that he was able to create the Hydrocon, and after understanding the relics of the ancient Martians, successfully unlock the secret to teleportation. Now, what is the Hydrocon? Well, the Hydrocon is a device which can be found in Alpha Labs Sector 1. It features new technology for transforming iron oxide into oxygen and hydrogen. The oxygen is mainly used for turning Mars and the UAC labs into habitable environments, but it is also used for the production of oxygen canisters. These are the same canisters the workers use in order to conduct repairs and maintenance on the outer surface of Mars. The Doom Marine also uses these oxygen canisters when crossing between sectors of the UAC. The hydrogen, on the other hand, when it's not being used to create water, alongside oxygen of course, is stored by the Molecular Fuel Storage Device, or simply known as the MFS. This is another device which was developed under the direct supervision of Petruger. The MFS is used to store hydrogen efficiently within cells, which can be later used as a source of power. So, as you can see, Petruger as the director of the Delta Labs, was instrumental in making Mars a habitable world. But that's only just the beginning, because these tablets and glyphs also came with a warning that there exists a realm where the very source of all evil resides. That very realm was the reason that the ancient Martians were wiped out in a grand war a very long time ago, even before humans existed within the galaxy. But by the time they had translated the warnings of how the ancient Martians went extinct, it was already too late, because by that point, teleportation already became a reality. And that actually makes sense, because most of the resources and funding went there, instead of archaeological studies and research. Betruger, alongside other scientists, would start exploring this vast new realm by using state-of-the-art technology, like camera-mounted scout drones, animal subjects, and eventually, they'd move on to human explorers as well, or as they call it, human volunteers. They would discover that this dimension was filled with extreme heat and hideous, savage creatures, some of them having multiple black eyes that would stare back at them. These creatures would devour anything they would send at it without mercy. They would also discover that the realm contained power or magical energies that could not be explained. 
One example of this is when the scientists and workers who were part of the expeditions later on discovered that while being in the realm of hell, they would have increased stamina. They would be able to perform physical labor non-stop and never get exhausted. This is confirmed in a PDA entry by Earl Besh as follows. This entry actually explains why the Doom Marine, from a gameplay and lore perspective, has infinite stamina while being in hell levels, which means the player can sprint forever without his stamina bar decreasing. Now, because of all of this unexplainable phenomenon, Betruger became obsessed with this new realm. He wanted to learn anything and everything about it. They would bring back any creatures they could get their hands on. The devil is real. I know. I built his cage. I'm getting abnormal readings. And try to understand who and what they were. They would keep these specimens within the Delta Labs and only the people with the highest level of clearance were allowed access. Delta Lab scientists such as Ian McCormick and Jonathan Ishii were already theorizing that the dimension was in fact hell itself, but they were too scared to send their theories to Earth. One scientist, however, named Dr. Elizabeth McNeil, the same scientist that we meet in Resurrection of Evil, challenged Petruger's authority and called the UAC board to stop the Delta Labs project by providing proof of the scientists' findings including the failed expeditions and the sheer number of dead explorers. After discovering this, Betruger expelled McNeil from Mars. She would later return a few years later to spearhead an operation to retrieve and destroy the Heart of Hell. If you want to learn more about the Heart of Hell, I have a video on it on my channel. The link is in the description and the pinned comment. Betruger's obsession led him to force the UAC to create more teleporters and then start sending more human test subjects. Most, if not all of them, would return in pieces. Yet Betruger did not care. It was described in Ian McCormick's video log that once the teleporter was built and the researchers started making regular expeditions into the new realm, Betruger would go through the portal himself, alone. He would return unscathed and unchanged physically, but he would start acting strange or different. He would have a cold disposition and became even more obsessed with opening the door into hell. Now, as I said earlier, Petruger ordered the UAC to create more teleporters to the realm of hell. At this stage, no one knew of his true intentions. The largest teleporter that would be created would be in the Exis Labs. We see this teleporter in Doom 3's second DLC, The Lost Mission. This teleporter would be capable of sending a small team of soldiers and potentially even a dropship into hell. But the construction of this teleporter would be slow because the person in charge of the Exis Labs, Dr. Richard Myers, learned a secret of Betruger that could potentially bring the end of humanity as we know it. So he would try his best to halt the construction of the largest teleporter, which mostly worked. Petruger quickly became frustrated with the slow construction of the Exis Labs. Therefore, he placed his full attention on the Delta Labs teleporter, which, again, was the first successful teleporter that was created and used for expeditions into hell. But now for the main question. What was Petruger's darkest secret? Well, Dr. Richard Myers decided to hack into Petruger's personal logs after hearing stories of strange events happening over at Delta Labs, such as multiple people constantly requesting to be sent back to Earth because they kept hearing whispers and seeing things that weren't really there, like scary hallucinations in shadows, or the sheer number of explorers that would go to this new realm and never be heard from again, or return in pieces. Finally, Petruger keeping those demonic creatures in test tubes to learn who and what they are. Petruger's personal logs mention his cult-like beliefs and how he could harness the evil powers within the realm of hell. His more recent logs detailed how demons contacted him through his dreams, offering him unimaginable powers, but they demanded he find a way to help them reclaim Mars and then Earth. Of course, Petruger would make a deal with the devils and in return would start the next invasion of hell upon Mars and beyond. The demons, in this very rare case, 
would actually hold up their end of the bargain. Petruger would be given immense power and a terrifying form. He would come to be known as the Maledict and become a leader of the demons. Petruger would be granted the power to convert almost any mortal into a demonic version of themselves who would become fiercely loyal. Petruger would call these demons, including the ones he created himself, his children. He says this multiple times throughout the games and the DLCs. In return, the demons would follow him till death. He also has the power to speak to individuals through telepathy. He regularly taunts and laughs and even tries to manipulate the Doom Marine to kill himself on multiple occasions. The powers at his disposal leads me to believe that Petruger wasn't just an ordinary demon, but more than likely an arch demon. That would explain why he would consider the demons as his children. Another reason why I think he would be an arch demon is because of an area located in the blood swamps within Doom Eternal. There is an area called Petruger Castle. Now it goes without saying, not any demon would have a location named after them, or even have a castle of their own. Now this could simply just be an easter egg that has no real meaning, or this could mean that there is a slight chance that we might, hopefully, see the return of Dr. Malcolm Betruger, also known as the Maledict. Now another theory I'd like to discuss is based off the extreme similarity between Dr. Olivia Pierce from Doom 2016 and Betruger. Now Olivia, just like Betruger, was promised power by the demons, in this case, specifically by the current Dark Lord of Hell at the time, which was the Spider Mastermind. Once Olivia fulfilled her role, she would have her consciousness merged with the Spider Mastermind and would then be elevated in her existence, or at least that's what she thought. Similarly, I believe Dr. Malcolm Betruger was also merged with the Maledict and that the Maledict has been around for potentially billions of years or millions of years. This is because in my video where I talk about the heart of hell, there were a lot of stone tablets that told of a prophecy or the history of the heart of hell, one of which involved the Maledict himself and the fact that the heart of hell was somehow tied to the Maledict. This leads me to believe that the Maledict promised Petruger that he would grant him powers, which he did, and therefore once Petruger fulfilled his role, he would then be merged with this new demon. And I think the iconography of Petruger being the tongue of the Maledict makes a lot of sense and in fact is one of the best parts about the lore because the Maledict was the one pulling all the strings whereas Petruger was simply the mouthpiece of the Maledict or the tongue. And this is the level of detail which makes me truly love the lore and everything about Doom 3. Anyways, if you've made it this far into the video, I have a question for you. Let me know in the comments below who is your favorite villain, whether it is Dr. Malcolm Petruger or Dr. Olivia Pierce. Make sure to let me know in the comments below and most importantly, let me know why. Anyways, if you enjoyed this video, make sure to leave a like and a comment down below. Make sure to subscribe to see more lore videos and not only that, I have plenty more videos planned for the future, including a lot of reviews and other opinion pieces. If you have any other ideas of other lores that I should cover, then make sure to let me know in the comments below. And as always, I will see you in the next video.